Hello, my name is Mungchul and in this quick tutorial I will show you how to use your new hotel booking system uh, which is usually uh, created for small hotels. Now this video will take about 10 minutes and it will go through how to manage your reservations, how to close rooms for uh, specific periods of time, how to secure reservations and so on and so on. We're going to go through the system very quickly. So sit back, relax and enjoy the video. In case you have some problems, please simply get in touch with the person who has recommended your the website. Now, in order to get to the specific component, you need to go to components and then you need to click to solid res. Now, I need to mention here that the system that you will be using is Joomla 3.3.6, which is currently the latest Joomla uh, that you may use. I would strongly recommend that you keep this Joomla up to date, i.e. whenever there is a new update, uh, make sure you use it and make sure you apply the uh, updates because those would usually be uh, concerning any security patches, uh, so they will actually help you keep your website uh, safe and secure. So, um, while this is loading, There we go. It got jumped a little bit because it's on a, it's on an American server and I'm in Europe. But um, I'm just going to go again. Basically, while this is loading, um, I want to speak to you quickly about the system. We are using 0.72. That's the latest stable version of SolidRest. SolidRest is a system which is very similar to Booking.com. Basically, it has super good functionalities and it actually allows people to uh, pretty much manage their own hotels themselves. Now. On the site over here, you will have all the uh, assets, which will be a number of different hotels. You will also have, you will uh, also have the different room types depending to the uh, different assets that you have in the system. The list of customers, the customer groups, the reservations. If you have coupons, you will be able to uh, use those here as well. Specific extras for the hotels and the rooms, currencies. Um, different countries so you can uh, limit the actual uh, reservations to specific country in case you operate in the US you can only limit it for example for the US um, taxes you can add various taxes uh, different employees if you want to give access to employees of the system this is where you will be able to limit the bookings within the system as well uh, and facility theme and system will probably be disabled within your uh, within your account uh, for security purposes now, in this specific case, I have created a website uh, for a very beautiful small hotel called Inaka Suites. Um, this is what it looks like on the front end. Obviously, it's a, it's a nice, cozy, small place, um, which will allow people to make simple reservations and which will also uh, pretty much run... Uh, fairly fairly uh, independently as you will see i've changed the price here to 0, 0, 0 0.01 cents uh, just for the sake of uh, being able to make one simple reservation uh, basically uh, it works pretty pretty straightforward and you will see this uh, as we go along the video so first thing i'm going to do is i will check the actual hotel uh, i've clicked on assets and then i've selected the hotel and this will give you the basic the basic information about the hotel, i.e. address, um, phone number, website, everything, currency, taxes, and so on and so on, plus a little description of the hotel. All this is basically displayed only if you if you tell it to be displayed. In this specific case, I've disallowed it because I have plenty of other pages which describe about the hotel location and so on and so forth. So I've stopped it and I do not display it. However, it is here for your um, convenience. You can click on publishing, whether it's published or not, whether it's default, uh, rating and so on. Uh, you can also de decide if there will be a deposit and you can also decide whether you would like to show only the reservation form, which is whether to display the information from the hotel or not to display the information from the hotel and whether to display coupons or not. And this is obviously the logo over here. Now, on room types, in this specific case, I have one specific type of room, uh, which is the standard suite. Uh, so it, 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 it will give you some information about the number of people and, and children that can actually uh, use it. Media is the images, 
and so on and so on. Uh, maybe one of the most important things is um, the custom fields, which will be general activity, services, internet, parking. All these specific policies that you will need for the hotel are actually in there, uh, including the uh, social networks. So all that is in there and you will be able to use it uh, easily. It's integrated within the system. Now, once you do all that, you will, you, you can just move on to the uh, rooms. Now, as you see, I have two rooms. Uh, the first one is unpublished. The second one is published. Um, those will be room types. Um, the reason why I have two is because I was making some experiments and I wanted to see different ways of visualizing the information. Once you open the room, it's within the room where you set up the prices. In your case, you will most likely have the complex tariff in place, which will allow you to make pretty much any tariffs you will need to make. Um, in this in this specific case, I have a standard rate, which is uh, rate per person per night, depending how many people use the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the room, the price will be calculated automatically. I could have created it as rate per room per night. Uh, or just package per room or package per person, anything that is that is good for you. And I've also said that they can use this tariff, this specific rate, for a minimum of one night to a hundred nights. If you want to change the minimum bookings, basically all you need to do is over here, you say what will be the minimum, uh, res the minimum amount of, of 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 nights that they can they can book the room for. Make sure you always select the, the, the days of the week because otherwise the reservation system will not work. And what I've done over here is I've said, okay, this price will be valid from the 1st of December 2014 until the 2nd of December 2016. So two years, maybe after that, we will just go and change the, uh, the price. In case we decide to keep the price the same, we're just going to change this date over here. Now, you can see the price that I've set up over here. It's $0.01 uh, for the first adult. Second adult is free. Third adult is 56 and the fourth adult is free. Uh, normally this will be $99 and I would have a combined price of $99 for the first adult. So if one or two people are using the apartment will be $99. If we have more than two, then the price will increase with $56. So it's going to be $145 altogether. And that's without, the, that's without the taxes. If you want to change the prices, you simply just go and change the prices accordingly. Uh, you can have different prices for different days of the week and so on. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Make sure that every single time you make some changes, you hit save for the tariff and then you hit save for the room itself. Otherwise, it will not save your information. And you're going to be really struggling with what's going on. Then you have the number of rooms. In this, in this example, I have two rooms. One is Miyaku, the other one is Hana. Media, which will be the pictures and some custom fields for the uh, rooms themselves. So taxes, cancellation, I mean, it's pretty much self-explanatory. After that, this will conclude the actual assets. So we get the idea what, what, what it's all about. After that, we have the customers. This will give you a list of all the customers that have ever been to the hotel with the specific customer groups. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, it will, it will, it will store the names and the, uh, all the details of your customers uh, who have uh, come to the uh, to the hotel. Um, you have different customer groups, uh, but this is uh, something that will take a bit more time, so I might as well just discuss it in a separate video. Uh, but basically, you can define different prices based on whether your customers are regular customers, whether they have different levels, and so on and so forth. And then we get to the list of reservations. If you click on those, it will give you all the reservations that have been made. Um, you can see that some of them are completed, some of them are actually unpaid. The unpaid ones will remain not shown on the actual calendars. Only the pending and arrival, only the completed ones will be shown on the calendar. If you click on the actual reservation, it will give you the details about uh, who's coming, when they're going to stay, which room, what, how much they've paid, and so on and so on and so on. It's really nifty, really clean, uh, and it will also give you the uh, opportunity to, to generate an invoice, to download the invoice, or email the invoice directly, or just to preview the invoice, and so on. It's it's really really nice. Uh, of course, you can you can change the status from here, whether it's been paid, or whether the arrival is pending. Now, once once it's been paid, you will no longer be able to change it. So you need to uh, you need to just take 
one which, which hasn't been paid or hasn't been confirmed. The idea behind this is that if it hasn't been paid, then you know you can you can play around with it. If not, um, there you go. You can just check it from here. Closed, cancelled, confirmed, and so on and so on. Right. So then, this will give you the information about how to deal with the reservations and where to check them. Now, if for example you will need to uh, limit the bookings which might happen in case you get a booking from an external system or anything like that. All you need to do, you need to go on system and you need to click on limit bookings. And then you just click new. So you will create a new limitation. And this is very specific. Uh, so basically you can have a new limitation. It's published. You choose, let's say for example, for the hotel. Obviously, if you want to do it on the room level, you will simply make the reservation uh, within within reservations here. So you can make a new reservation from, from the back end. That's no problem. But this is generally for the hotel. All right. And then you can say, OK, it starts from tomorrow and it will end in three days. And then if you hit the uh, refresh the room list, you will select. Uh, obviously, you can you can also do it from here. But I would recommend if, you, if you're going to be making separate reservations, just use the uh, list reservation system here and then you hit save and if you hit save it will store it within the system and it will it will also limit the number of uh, it will also limit the number of bookings throughout those specific dates so beam there you go it shows like this I'm just gonna delete this one right now because I don't want to delete uh, I don't want to stop the bookings for the uh, website and this will give you a pretty clear idea of how it actually operates uh, now make sure if you have any questions or if you have any uh, ideas or anything that you might require uh, just speak to the person who has recommended the website for you and we will sit down and uh, just get it redone revamped whatever you might need and we'll make sure that you have the best possible hotel website all right well thanks for watching have a wonderful day and uh, enjoy